have been a lot of disappointment. You'll just need to okay that. So welcome to those who are just joining us via the recording. And I am now going to share screen with you. Uh, sorry, Annette, if you could mute yourself, please. Um, I'm going to come to share screens. Okay. So I'm hoping that that is visible to everybody. If I could just get a thumbs up. Sophie, I can see you. Can I have a, th a thumbs up if you can see my PowerPoint? Great. Thank you. All right. Welcome to our new folks who've just joined us. If you can mute yourselves, please. I should actually put on. There we go. Mute all. Yes. Okay. So, Womancraft Publishing. We create life-changing, paradigm-shifting books by women for women. We were founded almost 10 years ago on the revolutionary vision that women and words can change the world. That's quite a big <laughs> statement, but that's what we are uh, standing by. Um, we midwife transformational women's words that have the power to challenge, inspire, and heal empowering our readers to actively co-create cultures that value and support the female and the feminine. We are based here in County Cork in Ireland. Uh, I'm just, okay. Um, and we publish a diverse and international community of female authors. We've published women from uh, a couple of countries in Europe. Our most of our authors come from the US, followed by the UK, followed by Ireland. We are limited in terms of who we can publish, just in terms of book distribution and where we can most easily get books to and from. Um, we also, as you may have noticed, feature the uh, cover art of women artists too and about 95 percent of our cover art is by women artists and that's something we're very very proud of we've published nearly 50 books in our almost 10 year history our books have been number one amazon bestsellers in many categories as well as nautilus and women's spirituality award winners and uh several other smaller places including uh kindred spirit magazine has just awarded our dear alice who's just had her third baby uh their mind body spirit author of the year which was very exciting diversity and inclusion um we are committed to diversity and inclusion in our books and our social media um ethnically we're not diverse at the moment um and are very aware of that but in terms of neurodiversity we are very diverse we've got a fair few different um neurotypes um i am neurodivergent i'm autistic and many of our readers and some of our authors are as well our authors are women in their 20s through to their 70s reflecting our readership our readership includes all genders but predominantly women um we reach backwards financially supporting tree sisters and the uh, UNHCR Girls Educational Fund, and forwards via World Reader, who provide our books as eBooks, free of charge to education projects around the world in developing countries. Like we have been read hundreds of thousands of times just on those alone, which is really, really exciting for us, as well as gifting books to women's refuges, prisons, red tents, women's circles, feminist libraries, um, we're in a lot of places where people need our work backed, but may not be able to um, pay for it. And many individual books give part of their royalties, and this is completely the author's choice, to additional charities supporting various oppressed groups and the environment, which again is something that we are very excited about. So we have in crazy years, published seven books in a year, and I was very clear, never again, because I was not going to survive that if we did that. 
I have in the past had a tendency to get very excited at this time of year when I get submissions and actually want to say yes to more than than actually I'm capable of managing. So we're very clear now that it's four books a year. We publish seasonally. Um, so we do, um, according to the Wheel of the Year, uh, Spring Equinox, Summer Solstice, Autumn Equinox, and then um, November, because we've got Christmas then. Um, so we are committing to publishing one to two new authors a year. So there are 50 of you here on this call. So you can do the maths that you know, we, we receive a lot of submissions. Last time we opened submissions, it was about 45 submissions we got. And of those, I think we managed to publish four or five of them. Um, and this time round, it's even more stringent. So I just need to um, flag that to you that there are a lot of books. So I have to be very, very picky. Books are only in the English language. Um, translations and stuff are something that come further down the line if your book is successful. Um, as I said, women authors based in the US, UK and Europe. We are not sure about Canada at the moment. We are very excited to have just been taken on by Red Wheel Wiser to distribute our books in the US, which might make taking on Canadian authors possible, but it's not something I can guarantee yet. You may have read a couple of our nonfiction titles. They were me breaking my own rules and my rules are even stricter now. We are a nonfiction uh, publisher. So that is that is just that. Uh, we love books that center women's lived experience and professional creative expertise. So we, we like that double edged sword. We don't just want memoir of you know how your life transformed you we get a lot of books like that and there are no they have to be based in your professional experience in a universal experience beyond you they have to thematically appeal to and engage with other women's experience and we love and honor your lived experience we don't want you to just put yourself on a pedestal as an expert um we don't want it to be cold and detached we love your lived experience but it has to have that universal aspect um we we love books that break new ground so yoga for witches for example just seeing the submission come through for that with the title yoga for witches just blew my mind that someone could combine magic with yoga and how does that look so I read a lot of books every year I get a lot of submissions every year I've got a pretty good sense about what is on the market already in our genres and what isn't so bear in mind that I need something that's going to be original exciting that there is a place there that hasn't been filled by somebody else and also that your book speaks for and to the silenced parts of ourselves. And that's a really key bit is releasing your voice and our collective voices as women's, uh, women, our collected experience as women. What hasn't been said already? What hasn't been given voice to? That's what I want to hear about. That's what I want to publish books about. So please, before submitting, make sure you have read a couple of our books. Make sure you have gone over our website and seen all the different titles we publish. And please, when you submit, make sure that if your book is on motherhood, for example, that you have looked at all our motherhood titles, at least on the website, and seen how is mine different? Because I'm not going to publish a book that's the same as a book I've already published. It's got to fit in its own little special place. What we don't publish, poetry collections. I get a lot of poetry inquiries. Uh, if you've read my work, if you've read Molly Rema's work, if you've read Stella Tomlinson's um, psych Cycles of Belonging, you will know that we include poetry as part of our books, but they are not poetry books. And there is a very clear difference in my mind. Um, we are not in a position to sell poetry. 
But just as with memoir, if it is part of a larger book, it is a wonderful form of expression that I love to have. Because one of the things I think about unleashing the feminine in our voices is that it treads new ground. It breaks through genres. And that is what I love to celebrate in our books. No fiction, no children's books, no memoir without a clear them thematic approach, no previously self-published work. I have broken that rule a couple of times for myself starting out, because otherwise we would have had no books starting out. I've broken that rule for one other author, um, but it's just tricky. So um, no previously self-published. Now, if you are previously self-published, absolutely fabulous, wonderful, we openly welcome people who have self-published previous work, but just not republishing a book that was self-published. No full color or highly illustrated books. If you're familiar with our work, you will know that uh, the more recent books are more highly illustrated in black and white illustrations, but that is mainly because I'm doing them or we have you know, got access to better illustrations now, but um, not colorful books because we are black and white only. No anthologies, no, although again, if you're familiar with my work, I include many women's voices within my books, but they're not an anthology. They are my book with bits woven in. Same with no multi-authored books. It's just tricky to manage when um, you have multiple people that you've got to run things past and making sure that everyone's on the same page. So we are now just down to um, single authored books. Books need to be between 30,000 words, which if you have the first edition of Moontime or if you've got Ian Magic, that would be about 30,000 words to 80,000 words. 80,000 words would be um, Sisters of the Solstice Moon, uh, Descent and Rising, um, She of the Sea. So that is purely down to logistics on our part. So I'm happy if you submit something a little larger that can be cut down, um, but that is our parameters. Trust our experience. We have made rare exceptions, but we have these boundaries for ourselves because they work for us. So please don't ask us to break these rules because they have been, they've come about through a lot of trial and error and testing things out. So what we offer, we, every year I put down on paper all of the knowledge that we realized that authors coming on board needed in terms of learning how to use our systems, in terms of knowing what comes next in the publishing process, in terms of how to do an audio book, all of that sort of thing. I put that down on paper. So when you join us, you get this comprehensive guide to how publishing with us works and how all the different bits and pieces of software that we use work. So that you have, you know, something to hold your hand as you go through the process. We do focus on supporting you as an author, which certainly isn't an experience that all authors have with their publishers and was one of the reasons why I established Womancraft, because I certainly didn't get that with my previous publisher. That's not to say that I can babysit you every step of the way. Um, but I can certainly hold your hand and ease your nerves at places where you find something tricky. Um, and you are not just a number to us. We are a small publisher and therefore you will know all of the team by email, at least. And you won't be forgotten. You won't be ignored. We are very, very responsive to our authors because each project really matters to us. We only pick people who we feel we can work with and projects that matter. So we provide a professionally edited and laid out book, attractive cover, which make all the difference. We have an extensive Womancraft community of supporters. This includes podcasts, magazines, journalists, bloggers, websites, booksellers, book mavens, readers, 
who will all help share your books. And we mark it by ripples. And so our job when we launch your book is to make a lovely set of ripples that carry on out through. We have a sisterhood of authors who are willing to share their experience. There's a private Facebook group for our authors um, where you can ask questions of, you know, you might be coming up to a point you don't quite know what to do um, and you can ask them questions. Um, you know, if you want to be put in contact with someone, you know, you could be put in contact to email somebody. So there, there are people there who've gone before you and it's not a competitive um arena the woman craft space it is very much a supportive circle of sister authors um we do our best to help support each other in whatever ways we can so it might be sharing books by other authors on our own pages it might be collaborating as um I did with a couple of the womancraft authors for the Lancaster uh witches revival and that Gina Martin and um, Liz Kelly did together um, for the World Parliament of Religions a couple of weeks ago. So we really do encourage that. Uh, we have almost between myself and my husband, who is our tech guy on the ground here, who does layout and book cover design and website and all of that. We have between us two decades of experience in publishing services, working on best-selling books, not only our books, but also for, as editors for hire, proofreaders for hire, layout for hire, website for other people, um, as well as being an author myself, which means I understand what this, this publishing process is like from the inside and therefore support you in that way that I get what it's like. I'm not trying to make you do things that I wouldn't want you, I wouldn't do myself. Um, we use contemporary marketing techniques that work and that have an established social media presence that we are dedicated to constantly growing. Uh, Sarah Robinson, a Yoga for Witches author, as I say, we support each other. She works for us as our social media manager. So, we keep it in the family here. Um, we're a good hearted team with a track record for consistently launching books to number one in their field on Amazon. And when you publish with us, you get five free copies on publication and unlimited author copies at 50% discount on their cover cost. Where are books are sold? So we are sold on all major online stockists, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, etc., which counts for a large percentage of our sales. Um, all of our books come out in paperback and ebook. Um, we sell signed paperbacks from our web shop, which has worldwide shipping. We have a growing network of independent retailers um, around the world, but especially in the UK and Ireland via us or via Ingram and from February next year our US wholesale will grow hugely because we are joining forces with Red Wheel Wiser so that means our books will be going out to a far far broader range of um, of stockists which is really exciting for us uh, we try to event, attend as many events as we can, um, both authors creating their own book reading events or being invited to speak or to talk at various places, um, as well as online events. So money. We offer the best royalties anywhere that I know of. We split royalties 50-50 on paperbacks and ebooks. Um, which is several times what you get from a traditional publisher. If you know anything about traditional publishing, what happens is you get an advance, which is royalties paid before any books are sold, and then you don't receive any money until you've paid out that advance, which could be a year, two years down the road. Then after that, you get around 50 pence sterling a book, whereas our authors 
get half of the royalty, which is somewhere between one pound and three pounds, depending on where that book is sold. So it's a huge amount more that you are getting per book. Obviously, where it's sold. So if, if something sells on our web shop or on Amazon, that is where you get the biggest royalty from, whereas stuff that's sold by a um, independent bookshop actually sadly gets the least royalty. Um, so we pay you royalties for each book sold. There's no upfront costs. You might have heard of uh, vanity publishers who charge you several thousand pounds to edit and format your book and then market it for you. But you're paying for the privilege. We don't you don't pay for anything with us. The only thing you pay for is if you want to buy books that you're then going to sell yourself. That's the only thing that you're paying for. Um, royalties reported quarterly and paid the following quarter, which is standard with the industry. We don't work with literary agents, which is quite unusual. Most big publishers, you wouldn't get past the door without a literary agent. We like to establish contact with our authors from the beginning because they are the person we are going to be working directly with. So you are a woman based in the US, UK or Europe with an engaging, inspiring message and a burning passion to share it with the women of the world. You have a well-established, ever-growing community of your own online, and this is vital. We have in the past taken on authors who didn't like or weren't comfortable with social media. It doesn't work for us and our book selling, so you have to be comfortable on Instagram, Facebook, at the very least. It could be Instagram and TikTok. You know, we're a bit old fashioned and we haven't quite got up the courage to um, enter the TikTok fray. Um, but we need you where the people are. And if that's something that's going to freak you out and you hate doing, then we are not a good fit for you. And I'm sad to say, to be honest, in the publishing industry as a whole nowadays, if you're not up for social media, you are going to struggle. Um. We don't have a, a cutoff limit where you have to have 20,000 followers or whatever. We're not like that. But really, if you don't have, I would say, a thousand, I mean, that's, you know, a ballpark figure. But that shows that you've committed. If you've got a thousand followers, you've committed to building that up over time and you've committed to come, turning up and engaging with them again and again. So that would show to me that would demonstrate your commitment. Um, but as I say, it's not that's a ballpark. It's not a, a fixed, immovable thing. Um, same with mailing list. We don't have a, a cut off figure because you could do all sorts of things to buy followers to, you know, do something that gets loads of people signed up, but they're not engaged with you. So we're not interested in useless numbers. We're interested in engaged people who love you, love your work, want to know more. Um, and also it helps to have gotten comfortable with being out in the public eye before you get a book out, because having a book out can be pretty overwhelming, pretty daunting, feeling that visible. So if you're used to being visible on social media, then you've got a natural platform to launch from. Whereas if the thought of people seeing you, seeing your work is purely terrifying and you've never done it before you're going to have the shock of your life when you publish um, a book um i want you to have shared your writing or your work in numerous places both online and offline i need people to know what your work is about and to have engaged with it and for you to have got the feedback about what works and what doesn't i need you to know where where you exist within your niche you need to be, and this is probably the most important thing out of everything, you need to be willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with us to co-create the best book that we can together. If you are going to second guess everything we do, 
So if you're going to second guess our motives, then it's going to be a tricky working relationship. You have to be able to trust us when we say we've tried this before and it hasn't worked. You have to trust our experience. We are extremely co collaborative in our working practices. We are extremely flexible in many, many ways, but there needs to be a baseline trust and a baseline desire to work with somebody on your book. And if that's not for you, that's fine. Then self-publishing is for you because then you don't need to negotiate anything. But what you're not doing when you come on board with Womancraft is you're not self-publishing using our resources and our time because we are co-creating your book together to put it out into the world as a Womancraft publishing book. So your book has to fit with all of our other books that are out there. It has to, it has to have a feel of Womancraft about it. And that's what you're looking for when you come our way. You do need to be reasonably tech confident. We have a couple of authors who struggle with Dropbox or with Asana, which is what we use for our um, task setting. You know, if, if that is you, you need to have somebody in your everyday life who can help and support you and assist you with that as you're learning the ropes, because we can not do a huge amount of that. You know, so you need to be able to learn basic tech software reasonably easily. So we use Dropbox, we use Asana, uh, you're submitting your documents in Microsoft Word format, and you need to be able to use your social media. Um, you need to be committed to working hard, meeting deadlines, communicating clearly. If, if something comes up in your life, you need to be able to say to us, guys, I'm sick, the kids are sick, I cannot do anything this week. I promise I will have it to you next week or whatever. We are not people who get angry or upset if life happens. Of course, life happens. But if you don't tell us what's happening in your world and you, you're missing deadlines, that's when things get tricky. Um, and so we ask you to take personal responsibility for your actions and your feelings. So in communications, just need to keep things as clear as possible. And we do the same on our end. You need to have a clear vision for your book and at the same time, be open to our input, input and feedback. Like the first thing that will happen if your book gets accepted is it will be edited. You will be getting my feedback on what works, what doesn't, what needs to change. So just check in with yourself about how good you are at taking feedback. You know, I know it's hard, but it's something that you need to be able to do. You need to have at least three chapters ready to submit and a proposal. I'll go through the proposal in a minute. Or you can submit the entire book. Either is OK with me. Um, but basically, I need to have a good, strong sense of where that book is going. And that's what the chapters give me an idea of, because you might have a fabulous idea, but you might not have the ability to communicate that in a clear and engaging way over an extended piece of writing. And that's what I need for you to be able to do in a book. You need to be familiar with our work, please. That is basic, basic. Um, nothing actually makes me crosser than people saying that they know our work and then submitting something which is almost identical to something we've already published. Publishing time frame, published four times a year. Three of these slots are prioritized to existing Womancraft authors. That doesn't mean that they get them, but they are the first ones that I get to say yes or no to. So um, at the moment we are looking at, we have one slot available end of 2024. We have two slots available 2025, uh, one available for 2026. Um, sadly, our production schedule is no longer the lovely quick turnaround times that it used to be when we started out, because we have a lot more books on the go. And because of our new deal with Red Wheel Wiser, it means that our books need to be ready for their beautiful catalogues um, 
a lot ahead of publication time. So a finished manuscript now has a minimum 14 month turnaround from submission to publication. That is still a little faster than traditional publishers, but not much. And I am sad about that because I loved, we, you know, what was it? Um, Walking the Threads of Time, we turned that around in two months from submission to publication. And it was fun. It was fly by the seat of your pants, but it was exciting. Okay, submission requirements, email only. Um, and I'll give you the email address at the end. Please submit your personal information and your manuscript as two separate Word documents and then have a brief covering email that comes with them. I will give you the guidelines, I think, later on, but if not, they are on our website. Please follow them. Please, please, please follow them. Okay, what to submit? So on your document, which tells you me about you, I need your name, location, email address. So this is the first thing I look at. So bear that in mind. This is my introduction to you. So if this is poorly spelt and crappily laid out and desperately apologetic or extremely arrogant, I'm gonna think, hmm, nope. And I might not even get to your manuscript. So please put yourself across as the lovely human being that you are and treat me as the lovely human being I am and give me the basic information that I need to work with. So, for example, if you are currently living in China, I'm really sorry, but I can't publish your manuscript. And that's an immediate no. So if you don't put your location in there, I can't make that decision. OK. You don't need to give me your entire life history. But when I say previous publications and author CV, put in the things that are going to be most relevant to me and that are most relevant to your book. So if you've won an award for your writing, great, put that in. If you've been published in several um, magazines or newspapers, put that in and let me know what, you know, just the, the title of the, the article and the title of the publication so that I can see that you've been publishing in this sort of field. Because if you've done all your writing on microbiology and you're submitting a book to me on yoga then obviously those two audiences aren't going to cross over so that experience isn't hugely relevant to me so make sure it's relevant stuff um and i really like to know about your professional experience so if you're writing about yoga and you're a yoga teacher and you've been teaching yoga for 10 years then tell me that i don't need a huge hoo-ha about it but just you know if you're submitting a book on creativity and um, you've painted for 20 years and you've developed a specific technique, then tell me about it. Because I need to know what's backing up this manuscript, where it's coming from. The next bit I'm aware is very sensitive and uh, private, but it's also very important for me. I don't need a huge thing. Just if you have, five children under the age of five, I kind of need to know that because I need to know, okay, that's gonna be taking a lot of your time and energy. So that could be tricky. Or if you have spent the last three years out of work because you've been really sick, I kind of need to know that because it helps me with my decision-making process. We have authors who have chronic health conditions. We have authors who, I'd say three quarters of our authors work full time. We have authors with multiple kids and no kids. Like, we are very flexible and understanding. I have chronic health stuff. We've got kids. Everyone on our team, um, no, some of our team have kids. Um, we know what it's like to have bad days. So we're not going to say no to you because you have one or multiple of those issues in your life, but we need to know about it so we know what we're choosing. And we can have a conversation with you then about that later. Okay. What to submit? 
Uh, I feel like I have already talked enough about this, but basically I want to get a sense of your numbers for Instagram, Twitter, Stroke X, TikTok, whatever the, the ones that you use are, your numbers help me. They're not going to make the decision, but they help me. And also just to be aware of which platforms you're actually on. Again, helps me. Um, if you've got any personal or professional contacts who might provide endorsements, that's a big one. Do you know an author who you're friendly with and would be happy to write an endorsement of your work? Do you have a professional mentor who would be happy to write some blurb for your book? Um, do you have a couple of friends who have podcasts who would be happy to have you on? That sort of thing really helps because we bring our marketing expertise and our contacts to the table, but you also need to bring some as well. So we need to know that you have connections of some sort that will be able to help. And don't worry about, you know, that you're not best friends with Julia Roberts or something. We're not expecting that. We don't need A-list celebrities. We just need people in your field who would be prepared to support your work in some way. Um, so you submit your manuscript in the best possible state you can. Obviously, it's going to get edited. Obviously, it's going to be laid out and proofread and all of that. That lies in the future. But if you submit to me something that is in such a state that I can't even get a sense of it, then that's going to be probably a no from me. So please put basic spell check over it. Number one, read it through. Make sure you're happy with it before you hit submit. I know the, the feeling of the heart beating in the chest and oh my goodness you know I've just got to press send but please do another read through before you do make sure you are really happy with it um and submit as a word document because we work with uh word not on apple do not submit cover art or illustrations this goes for any publisher most of what I'm telling you goes for any publisher but this certainly does you're not expected to create your own cover if anything, it makes you look amateur. We will create your cover together. So at that point, if you have something in mind, you can bring that to the table, but you don't do that when you're submitting. Please, please, please do not tell me what to do or what to think. That is my pet bugbear. Somebody gets on to me and says, you just have to choose this. This is the best book out there. You know, I am the only expert. No, 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 stop. Just be real. Talk to me like you would talk to me if we were sitting down opposite each other at a table. Don't sell at me and don't tell me what to think or do. And please don't hassle us. Um, when you submit, you will receive a acknowledgement of your submission within the week. If you don't receive that within the week, and you're into 10 days, two weeks, please do contact us and just say, have you got it? That's fine. After that, we have a 12 week policy before we have to get back to you. you we may get back to you much sooner, but it's 12 weeks because I am gonna be under an awful lot of paper reading an awful lot of submissions. So if you are hassling me, you are going to fall off my submissions pile because I don't need to be hassled when I've clearly stated my boundaries. God, I sound like a real bitch, but you know what? <laughs> you learn a lot when you um, deal with a lot of people and a lot of things. You need clear boundaries. Okay, so that's that. And we don't enter into discussions. If we have rejected your manuscript, we're not going to negotiate on, well, if I just did this or if I just did that, no. If I think something can be adjusted, and that we can work with you, I will say that. It's not for you to come to me and keep trying to negotiate. And that goes for any publisher. So if we're interested in your manuscript, the first thing that you will receive from us is an email within those 12 weeks inviting you to a Zoom interview. This does not mean a definite yes. This means we want to know more. We're interested in talking to you. We might have questions. 
about various things in your submission, but it means that you are in a much smaller pile of maybes. So you've, you've moved from the definite nose and into the maybe pile. And it'll be your chance to ask us questions as well, to see if we're going to be a good fit for you at that point, if you have any queries about us. Following this, we make our decision. Sometimes I'm 99% sure and I will offer on the call, but I've tried to train myself to put down the call, not be impulsive, not burst into tears and get all excited and actually take a breath and then write the email to say it's a yes. If you're accepted, you will either receive a memorandum of agreement or a full contract, depending on the state of the manuscript. So a memo of agreement is like a pre-contract contract. It's for unfinished books where you've only written a couple of chapters. And so I can't tell if the full book is going to work. I don't know because I haven't got it in my hands. But what I think is that you you will be able to do that for me, but I can't enter into a contract with you based on that. This is quite different to how traditional publishers work. What they do is they nab you into a contract after fighting with other people and throwing money at you. And then if you don't deliver that, you've then got to pay back that money under threat of legal action. <laughs> That's not how we work. So what I say is, yes, I think this is going to be a book that we can publish. And I think you're a person we can publish with. And we will pencil it into our schedule and you will work towards the deadlines that we've agreed and the editorial guidance that I've given you. If you miss those deadlines and don't communicate with us, then you're off. That's done. You've had your chance. I'm sorry. If you need to renegotiate deadlines, fine. We can absolutely do that. If what you submit is so far from what you'd first proposed, then that will be a no. If it's something that just needs you know, some editing work and whatever, and we can move forward, then you will be given your full contract. Lordy, we're nearly there. We are nearly there. <laughs> One more slide to go. <sighs> okay. Last time the submissions were open was 18 months ago because I have been living in an almost permanent migraine since then. So we received over 40 for only four slots. This time we have even fewer slots available. As I said, it's over several years that we have the slots. We have been thanked many times with tears in their eyes when I've actually seen the people in person for our rejection emails. I know what it's like to receive a rejection from a publisher. And I really get how yucky it feels to have someone say no to your work. So I pitch my rejections with that knowing. Where your manuscript is strong, but for whatever reason, maybe we've got something too similar. Maybe we've got something in the pipelines that you don't know about that's too similar where it's something that I don't feel it's my expertise to work on, where it's not our genre then I will give you recommendations for other publishers or publishing options to pursue. So that might be, this would be a good book for self-publishing, or it might be, why don't you take this to Hay House? Because I think this is more their sort of thing. So if I give you that feedback, be aware that that is based on my judgment. It's not that I've talked to Hay House and they said, oh yes, we'll take that. It's just, it feels like it would be a better fit for them. But I wouldn't be recommending that unless I felt it had some sort of potential. OK. Oh, we're there. So submissions open 1st of October and they will be accepted through to the 10th of October. The, we are bracing our inbox for the deluge. Email address is submissions at womancraftpublishing.com. No exceptions. I'm really sorry if your dog dies and you can't get it to us by October the 10th. It just means you're going to need to submit next time, which I think is going to be June next year. So you'll have, you know, only nine months to wait. 
Um, and please, like you've listened to me blather on, but all of the information is on the submissions page on our website. So please follow that. Go through it step by step as you um, as you put your submission together. Give yourself time to put together your submission, to do yourself the best justice you can. OK, I'm going to stop screen sharing now. And I'm going to dive into the chat and holy shit, there's a lot of questions there. So, right. Stop, share. Oh, it's nice to see your faces again. Hello. Um, okay, I'm a little nervous about this. Here we go. Please don't tell me you, nobody's been able to um, hear me this whole time, right? Um, Can I clarify the word count again? Okay, Coco, hello. Um, so word count is uh, the finished manuscript has to be between 30,000 and 80,000 words. I'm happy if you submit a little bit more, but not much more. Hello, Coco. <laughs> um, so that's what you are aiming towards your finished book but you might only be submitting two or three, three chapters or so for this first submission. Does that make sense, Coco? Perfect. All right, next one. So do type in your... Um... Oh, thank you, Sophie, and, uh, <laughs> and others who were helping answer questions as we went, thank you. Yes, we are good royalties. <laughs> We'll probably put ourselves out of business in the process. But um, as an author, I don't think it's fair that a publisher gets the majority of the money from the book that you've spent several years working on. I'm just like, I'm not for that. Uh, it's a huge amount of creative work to make a book. So you need to be able to make money out of it. Um, OK, we pay royalties quarterly. Um, and it's 90 days after those those are earned because that's how long it takes them to pay us the money um, and that is standard um, and I say sharing work in various areas so good question when I say sharing your work I mean both online and offline like some of us might be more comfortable in one sphere rather than another I'm not going to discount the importance of having you know your own classes that you teach on the ground but obviously that's only going to reach a smaller number of people and a local number of people so if you haven't taught internationally which most of us haven't when we before we publish books then you know then you do need to have a social media presence to reach internationally so i do need both but i'm very happy if it's kind of you know is stronger in, in one than the other because that's just life. We all have different strengths. Okay. Thank you to Lisa. I am the editor, yes. <laughs> I wear many hats in Womancraft. Um, so I am our commissioning editor. So I'm the one who picks our books. If I have um Ones that I kind of have question marks over, I will get Lee, who is our um, in-house um, office manager plus main proofreader and a big lover of books. I will get her to read over it. And if it is in some one of our particular author's fields, I might get one of them to pitch in as well, just to see you know, if it, it rings true for them. But that is pretty rare. I... Trust my own opinion <laughs> pretty much because that's how we've got this far. So um, then, so layout is done by Patrick. I um, have the vision for layout usually um, in terms of creative layout, in terms of technical layout, that's usually all in his hands, but I would have a sign off on all of that cover design is between myself and the author 
and we will throw out ideas that we both like. We will find uh, common ground. We will then find what's available. And then between myself and Patrick, we will design the cover and then come back to you for feedback and we'll go back with some boards until we are all happy with it. And then proofreading is done majority by Lee, sometimes by Patrick. American who's been living in Mexico for several years. Um, the main issue, who is this? Uh, Karen Kinney. Um, the main issue with uh, Mexico is just shipping of books. Um, we need to be able to get your books to you quickly and easily. Um, and when it's out of the zones that our printers usually ship to, things can get lost, can be tricky, taxes get, have to get paid on borders, it all gets expensive. So that's why we are, um, we are like that. Like if you can get them delivered to somewhere in America and you can collect from them from there and that's absolutely fine. So that's our main issue is just, uh... <laughs> thank you Gemma. Um, if you have three quarters of your book written by submission date, do you just, do you submit that much or just the first three chapters? Basically submit what is strong. So it might not even be the first three chapters. It might be chapter one, chapter three, and chapter five. If they're the really strong bit where you've really found your voice, you've really got your message, then submit that. Um, if you've written the three quarters of it and you feel like all of that is strong, then submit all of that. Because obviously the more I can read, the more sense I can get. Because your chapter one might not work for me, but I might like the idea and I might like your title. And then I kind of skim through the first chapter because I'm like no and then when I'm getting later on I'm like oh yeah this is really strong we need it more like this so the more material I have to read that reflects your abilities and your vision for the book the better um the more stuff that you submit that is weak and is going to take away from that the worse for you so okay So Sophie, does that is that clear for you now? Sophie Messenger, you can unmute yourself if you want. Sorry, which bit is clear? The um, submission of said, the... Does submitting only three chapters reduce the chance of being given? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very clear. Thank you. It's just okay. you, you haven't read the question, so I wasn't sure which one of my questions you were asking <laughs> me about. Sorry, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, are there limitations on submissions? Can I submit more than one manuscript? Hmm, interesting. I'm going to say please only submit one manuscript each submission time. Submit the one that is most alive for you right now. Because, like, I'm somebody who has a gazillion book ideas and whatever. I know Mary, who's on the call, too. She's, she's a woman of many books, too. Um, and that's a wonderful gift. But you also need to be able to focus your energy, your mind, your time. And so I need to know where your focus is. Um, I will say, if you want to tell me that you have a couple of other book ideas, you can do that in your submission bit that you write down. By all means, you can say I've got another couple of books on the go, one's on this, one's on that, but just submit one manuscript. Because if I like your voice, if I like your background, your setup, and I think, yes, but not this book for us, and I've seen that you've got another book on the go, then I will come your way and ask for it. Um, okay. If your manuscript contains revelatory information and you decide not to publish it, how see? OK, so all manuscripts are entirely private between me and you, unless I ask one of our inner circle to 
read you know to compare notes with me because i'm i'm on the fence about it if you don't want that to happen by all means just put that in your in your thing like your your manuscript is considered confidential it doesn't get you know we don't publish snippets of it on our website you know it is between you and me but at the same time be aware that you are submitting to me for publication publication literally means the information is going to be public so if there is stuff in there that you don't want to be made public then maybe publication isn't the best idea and you know it's tricky to know what to share and what not to share in in manuscripts it's really scary putting private stuff into books you know for those of you who've read you know medicine woman for example like you know it gets really personal it's really scary sharing that information but I did it within a safe way knowing that it was going to be published so you know that is something that you need to navigate uh yeah recording will be available tomorrow uh can I expand more on thematic approach to memoir writing okay she of C, medicine woman um Walking with Persephone, they're all memoir in one sense, as in they very much focus on an individual woman's story, but they're all thematic. So Walking with Persephone focuses on the goddess Persephone. It focuses on both universal aspects of that as well as the individual author's experiences of it. But what it isn't is just a book about how she broke her leg and, you know, was a bit miserable about it, the end. You know, it was very much about how to precess, priestess in um, the modern world, how to engage on a personal level with a deity, who Persephone is. You know, it, it gives you far more than just Molly's story. Medicine Woman, for example, it uses my personal story as an example, as the... the um, the thread that ties the book together, the why of the book, but the book goes into in great detail the universality of women's experience of pain and being how they are treated by the medical profession with a huge amount of research in it as well. So it's not just my story about how um, I had a nervous breakdown and then got diagnosed as autistic. You know, <laughs> there's more to it than that. All right. So, uh, pet hate of mine, uh, and sorry to say this, but I might as well, because it might stop a few of them coming my way, um, kind of spiritual um, memoir that kind of is, oh, I'm basically going to describe my own books, <laughs> but um, some sort of spiritual um, memoir where you have this big revelation and change your life and god talks to you and um and now you're going to teach the world because you can change the world i kind of it has to be done really well to be done well and i get a lot of that my way so again if it's just personal on that level mm, pray not okay teaching classes online using our own material would count absolutely Polly that's a really strong way of uh, knowing that whether your material works or not is it advisable to have a special author page on social media uh, yes uh, you know I, th I think it's good to have a professional presence where you're not turning up and complaining that the cat's just vomited on your bed um, you know to kind of separate those bits of your life a little bit but if you've got if you've just focused on building like a massive Facebook page and you currently have 4,000 people on there then you know that's a lot of contacts that you have so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sniff at that um uh yeah interesting question about pregnancy and birth Sophie we actually have a book coming up from Alice Grist on soulful pregnancy, which is very much a spiritual, creative, week by week guide to navigating all the themes of pregnancy. 
and what they bring up for us as women. But what it's not is a how to give birth book and it's not a uh, herbal treatments and yoga for birth. The, my reasons for that are one of our competitors um, is Pinter and Martin, who've been established for a lot longer than us and who that is their genre that is what they started up to do they do it fabulously well so there is no point in me going up in competition against them because they have that sorted if you want to do a birth book or a pregnancy book or a breastfeeding book they have everything set up to do it the best that they can yeah sophie i'm published with them already it, okay. it just i feel much more attracted to um submit what i'm birthing now okay um to you then then well i mean you've you've published with them so you know you know the experience with them but i just from the outside i'm just very aware that that it's it's not territory that it needs two publishers in because they do it so well and they have so many contacts in it um same with autism publishing you know jessica kingsley is much stronger than us same with hay house like we don't try and replicate what other publishers do really well there's no point um uh canada sort it submit and um jillian submit and we <laughs> we will um have a conversation with red wheel and and see what the story is the main issue is going to be tax on the border of your books okay um ha -ha, great question how many copies of your books sell on average now i'm going to do um a talk on becoming an author um, a little bit later in the year, maybe early next year. And I'm gonna go through numbers of publishing. It's not really something I can do here, but all I can say is that people tend to overestimate how many books they think they're going to sell. The reality is there's um, 4 million books published every year. Um, a, there are 20 books that sell over a million copies a year. Um, a successful book for a traditional publisher is 10,000 copies plus, and the large majority of books don't actually even pay their costs. So that's the reality of book publishing. So we would be hoping that your book would sell around 500 in its first year we would be looking at now some can sell that on pre-orders alone you know so we have a huge variety of books but we would be hoping for that at least 500 copies in that first year um you know a, a very successful book could easily do six or seven thousand in that first year so it really depends how you go but for your first book it you know it would be hundreds rather than thousands. And that is across the board with publishers. You know, people often think publishing is going to be high, get really rich, and I sell hundreds of thousands of books. No, <laughs> that's actually not the reality of publishing, regardless of who you publish with or if you self-publish. Publishing is a long game. It is something that takes time and effort and energy consistently, again and again, year after year, showing up, doing the work finding your people. Will I publish fiction again? It's just, fiction doesn't sell hugely well for us. It's not my speciality. My speciality is nonfiction. Um, occasionally I come across a book that is just so woman craft we have to publish it because I can't imagine that anybody else would because it wouldn't be their sort of thing and it is ours. So I have broken that rule a couple of times. I might break that rule again, but it's pretty unlikely now that I've narrowed how many books we publish a year. Okay. Oh, I've got to the bottom. <laughs> All right. So I am hoping that um, I've answered all those questions there. If anybody has a question that they haven't typed that they need to ask me, if you want to uh, unmute yourself and um, ask, uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes and then um, I hope to finish up because I was hoping this would be an hour and we're almost an hour and a quarter. <laughs> I've not got a okay. question. 
Hi, I've not got a question, but I just want to say I was crying towards the end of that because um, having spoken to you before, just knowing that how limited the numbers are that you take on, I just feel, wow, what an honour and a privilege. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like a kick up the butt to um to get some in immediately. <laughs> yeah. I'm you. really, really looking forward to it. <laughs> no, I know, I know, honest to God, dragging feet is not... <laughs> You know, but yeah, thank you so much. This just crystallized everything and why yeah. I felt drawn to yeah, make this. So thank you so much. Fabulous, thank you. Well I'm looking forward to it and make sure you get it in ahead of ahead of all this crowd because there's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. a lot of stuff on my desk then. It Perfect. is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Coco submitted to us last time and um Hers was a love your idea, love the title, keep working on it, submit it to me when it is finished. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So yeah, see, that's how it happens. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Gemma, if you were not successful in October and I proved it, could you submit in June? I would say that to you. I would be, that would be uh, me phoning you up not saying zooming you and saying really like the idea really like this and that but these take it in this direction need to work more on that so that would be the conversation so if you are rejected for that manuscript that for me is end of story um it's not a make it better and come again you get one chance for each book and you come at me with the best thing that you can and if it's not for me or whatever, then then it's a, a no and a thank you. And you're very welcome to submit a different thing again in the future, but not the same book. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Joe, hello. Are you back in Scotland? Oh, <laughs> um, it's lovely actually. I'm I'm spotting. Joe came to the um. The, the event in um, Lancaster. So I got to meet her last week for the first time. And I'm seeing April, who is there in, very close to me actually, about 30 miles down the road. Um, I'm in Dublin at the moment, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi neighbor. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so really lovely to be seeing familiar faces. And for those of you who, and Polly obviously, and Mary, um, and for those of you whose faces I don't know yet, um, really, really delighted that you are here with me and that you are interested and excited about womancraft. Um, this is the first time I've done a submissions call. I saw that um, another independent press did them and I thought, actually, that's a really good idea just to, so that you get a sense of who we are, what we're looking for, what we want. Um, and to, to put a face to a, a, a name. <laughs> So um, we look forward to seeing all your submissions and a um, little bit scared. There's going to be a lot to read, um, but really, really excited and hoping that you can be one of our Womancraft authors very soon. All right. Take care.